Thank you. Thank you for following us. Thank you for everybody that helps put this on. For sure. Yeah, it's really good. So I have been thinking about thoughts and feeling. I think about you too. And that's what has my curiosity. Because as you think about thoughts and the thoughts we have here and now with what's manifest, and then there are the thoughts that you have when you meditate, which are inspired. Talk to me about that. Is there a difference in them? Well, the difference in thought worth talking about rather than the subject of the thought, which is sort of those piles that humans want to make. The difference in thoughts or thought piles, let's say, is how much alignment there is with the way source energy is thinking about the thought. Because when you hook into a thought through the lens of source energy, it is a much more dynamic, meaning much more momentum, meaning much more powerful, meaning in physical terms, much more productive thought. That's what we've meant, as we've said for years, that one who's tuned in, tapped in, turned on is more powerful than millions who are not. It's not your numbers. It's not anything other than the power of the thought that is active within you. And the activation of that thought now being your point of attraction and your point of attraction being everything that matters. So when you think thoughts in the way that your inner being thinks thoughts, the collective nature of that resonance between you and your inner being and the law of attractions response to both of you at the same place in the same time makes for a much more powerful, emphatic, obvious experience that you can track. In other words, you can make the correlation between the thought and what comes next. Yeah, clearly. I mean, I've had that experience where all of a sudden it's just huge and you just feel it go like this There's lots of descriptive words that humans use the light dawned, the earth opened the skies parted i saw the light so you've also said the term that once a thought a thought keeps thinking so once you think a thought which is your attention to it when you activate it in you then because of law of attraction the thought is now activated too so now you and the thought are more activated which makes both of you have more attraction power and so the way we've been describing that is when you think a thought now the thought thinks but the more accurate description would be when a thought vibrates within you you influence the vibration of that thought within itself it's another way of saying it so the, the thought is out there and, and kind of using your analogy of the receiver am i lining up with that thought yeah. or am I getting I'm yeah. getting a glimpse of it with yeah. some of the contrast that I'm experiencing and every thought that has ever been thought still exists and a thought is where you last left it so when you think a thought from your ever-changing vantage point that thought evolves as has your vantage point earlier when we said this is what the evolution of all species is about this is what the evolution of all thought is about this is the evolution of all evolution what motion forward is mm -hmm. so it's the apparatus of our mind when you think about meditation and kind of in my as I think about well, your mind your brain is a focusing mechanism all right let's have some fun in the same way that a lot of you today really felt resonance you accepted the premise that there's you an extension of source energy and your point of attraction and there's your inner being and your inner beings point of attraction and now we've just acknowledged that when you are focused upon something in the way your inner being is which means you feel great and you have great clarity that now your attraction power is really enhanced by multiples that we can't even accurately describe it depends on the power of the desire and if the desire is relatively strong and there's no resistance then there's a huge influence in that your attraction power is really 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 strong so you got that yeah so now there's you and your brain and there's your inner being and your inner beings infinite intelligence let's say it again there's you and your brain and there's your inner being and its consciousness now we could talk about you and your consciousness, but that's not where you wanted to take this subject. You wanted to make it about you and your brain. Well, 
we'll make it about you and your brain or we'll make it about you and your consciousness but you and your consciousness or you and your brain you're doing whatever you're doing but your inner being and its consciousness ho 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 so when you bring your consciousness to the place that is the consciousness of your inner being ho oh, what you know and what you can see and the insights that you have and your capacity to taste the sweet nectar of alignment is indescribable so that might have been sort of where you were going it is where i was going because the the consciousness my consciousness piece is exactly right and when i think about the meditative process it's almost for me of like a conditioning of the brain or a training of the brain to allow that consciousness to really Perfect flow words. it is a training of the brain to allow this blending and greater consciousness mm -hmm. yeah and so some might say oh meditation is really hard for me because i can't quiet my mind and then we always say when you say that well you've trained your brain to be responsive to life and so we get how it's sort of hard to slow that down and you then sometimes say well it's a sacrifice that I'm really not willing to make and we say we get it that you might feel like you're sacrificing some human consciousness but when you realize that by quieting the resistance of human consciousness and allowing the fullness of infinite intelligence in a moment it's a very small sacrifice mm -hmm. I agree and we're not asking you to give up who you are we're asking you to reclaim who you are and it's not just the who you were when you first got here it's the who you've become because you've been here yeah and you I can feel that when I get to that point where I feel clear clarity the clarity I think that you describe when I feel that I can feel my consciousness and I just feel yeah, yeah more complete well one of the reasons that it's a feeling sensation is that when you are resistance free and you are allowing your consciousness which you want to call your brain some do to join with the infinite consciousness or the consciousness of infinite intelligence you've opened the intelligence of all of the cells of your body to that intelligence and when there's nothing in the way of that communication you feel enlivened and you are experiencing what true thriving is and by true thriving we would like to identify that as perfect communication between infinite intelligence and the consciousness of cells talk about positive expectation talk about renewal talk about rejuvenation talk about refreshment that's why meditation has the potential of being so refreshing because it is a time of truly refreshing you right to the very finite details of your physical apparatus and your cells are much less resistant in nature than your what you want to call brain your cells when you have a negative belief about your body the individual cells aren't having any of it they don't all get together and say well here's the company line here here's what's come down from headquarters we're not thriving under these conditions your cells don't have that kind of communication your cells are first and foremost they are so easily influenced by source energy and if you're not in the way then they are so easily influenced by source energy can we take this a little bit further yes and talk about this can you hear is it good so when you think about so my consciousness and getting blended with my infinite consciousness there and then using that to inspire people just like the previous conversation inspiring the math class and so holding that throughout the day is is the best way to do that and well it's holding it throughout the day gives you this advantage you just practice it more but it will be available to you at any moment that you ask for it that's what our friend meant she didn't want to set any strong standards that's what we meant when we said we're always there to meet you and any time that you get there and the more often you are there then the more you will expect to be there Esther has had the experience of standing before you for so long so many years that she could meet someone in the hallway and receive very bad news and she could 
be in her perch getting ready to come out and she could be relaxed in a meditative state and she could hit the stage in alignment that would be unaffected by what happened in the hallway because her expectation is such when Jerry made his transition and she was suffering so much sadness about him not being there she said to her friends it's really interesting to me that the weirdest part of my life is now the only normal part of my life because what felt normal to her was standing here like this and Abraham flowing through and it was really the only real relief that she had too because there was no resistance during that time for a while she thought about just getting you to come with her everywhere and just <laughs> we'll just keep Abraham going here and mm -hmm. yeah yeah so just taking pauses throughout the day to allow that to and flow expect that it's yeah. there for you anytime you want it and be wise about it don't get so far away from it that you can't get back to it but once you get there easily it's always easy to get back then you know what happens under those conditions we like that discussion now you are living a more step five life step one is ask contrast helps you do that step two is not your work source answers step three is your work you get into alignment so that you're in the receptive mode step four is you're really good at that that's what you're talking about you're really good at that you practice it enough that it's easy for you to get there and the mastery of step three is what step four is and then step five is now you're no longer afraid of contrast because you're not putting that impossible responsibility on yourself you're not saying I'm gonna get there and I'm always gonna stay right there instead you're saying I get there often I know what it feels when I am there I know what it feels when I'm not there I prefer to be there I can get there easily and so now now you're ready to consciously embrace the world with all of its ebbs and flows and flaws and wonderments and you don't feel guarded about it because you know that you've got this infinite intelligence that's always right there and that you can hook into it anytime you want sometimes once you first begin this work you'll say to us Abraham I've been meditating and I've been applying the stuff and I'm getting pretty good at it but those people at work are so negative <laughs> and I'm worried about their influence on me and we always say we like it when you bump up against resistance after having tasted the sweetness of no resistance because now you can make some choices and now now and only then are you willing to make different choices instead of choosing which pile you believe you're choosing alignment or not and once that starts being the decision that you're making and you're choosing alignment more and more and more now the piles are all your friends now none of those piles freak you out you're not guarded or afraid of any of them because you know none of them can assert themselves into your experience and you know there's a lot of good stuff in every one of those piles too so true yeah so true yeah yeah that's great perfect it is really good thank you, thank you.